Uh, good afternoon, I'm Bucks County District Attorney Matt Weintraub. Uh, the purpose of today's press conference is to announce our charging decision as a result of the shooting that occurred on Friday, October the 7th of this year at about 11.30 p.m. at Steam Pub, which is located on 2nd Street Pike in Southampton. Uh, first, I'd like to give you some of my preliminary thoughts, and I have to start by expressing how sorry I am to the Farrell and Panabianco families for the loss of their loved ones, their family members. I was able to meet with the Panabianco family earlier today to express my sorrow in person and to explain the reasoning to them behind my decisions today, which I felt I owed to them. We offered the same to the Farrells, but we're not able to meet with them yet by their choice, but that offer, of course, remains open. Raymond Farrell's and Stephen Panabianco's deaths were not necessary. They did not deserve to die. Perhaps 20, maybe even 10 years ago, these deaths might not have even occurred. And I don't want to editorialize much further than that, but as district attorney, I have to decide whether anyone behaved criminally, not whether they behaved morally or immorally, or even whether they made the best choices that night. I must decide, decide I'm sorry, plainly, plainly and simply whether Liam Hughes behaved criminally that evening and whether anyone else did as well. I do so by considering the facts, the law, and the totality of the circumstances surrounding this tragic incident. Based on this review, I am not charging Liam Hughes with any crimes as a result of his actions in causing the deaths of Steve Panabianco and Raymond Farrell or for injuring Richard Bowman. Michael Michelle, however, will be charged with simple assault for his physical assault of Liam Hughes during that same incident. First, these are the facts that I found to be true. And this is a summary. Steam patron Liam Hughes was assaulted and beaten by at least three men, Raymond Farrell, Stephen Panabianco, and Michael Michelle in the parking lot next to and inside his car as he attempted to leave the premises. After warning them that he had a weapon for which he had a permit to carry and still does today, Hughes fired eight shots, killing Farrell and Panabianco and wounding a fourth person who was with Farrell, Panabianco, Michelle and others, Richard Bowman, who was shot in the arm and fortunately will recover. Immediately after firing those eight shots, Hughes called 911, remained on scene, and fully cooperated with the police. My reasoning for why we are not charging Liam Hughes is fairly in-depth. We have to consider many factors. But first, let's consider what we know about Liam Hughes as a result of our extensive investigation. He was 21 years old, a former, former Neshaminy High School graduate who currently resides in Middletown Township. He's a trained auto technician and has been a military reservist for three and a half years. He did hold and concurrently holds a valid concealed weapons permit and the firearm that he used in this shooting was legally purchased by him. At five foot six, 140 pounds, he's considerably smaller than his three attackers. He places the first call to 911 to the police within one minute of the shooting, and he provides all the information requested of him to 911 and to the police as he remained on scene. He was cooperative. He cooperated fully then with police, including giving video and audio recorded interviews, consenting to gunshot residue testing, photographing, having his clothing be, be collected to a blood draw. He allowed police to review his cell phone and he consented to release of his medical records. He did sustain injuries as a result of this beating, which include acute post-traumatic headache, left ear was red and swollen, his left inner ear was red and had dried blood upon exam, he suffered from a concussion 
blurry vision, light sensitivity, and nausea. He had a split lip, bruising to his forehead and bruising to the right side of his head and scalp, as well as a bloody nose. The results of the blood draw yielded no alcohol present in his blood and no heavy, heavy drugs. However, there was the presence of inactive and active metabolites of THC, which Hughes did tell the police they would find during his interview in his blood. There was no obvious impairment, however, at the scene, and Hughes corroborated that by saying he had ingested marijuana the day before. There were no other illegal substances in his blood. Next, I had to review the applicable law. And as is paramount in these cases, self-defense played a critical role. So there's a statute under Title 18, which is Section 505, Hughes' use of force and self-protection. The use of deadly force is justifiable when circumstances are such as in this case, Hughes reasonably believed that he had to use deadly force, that it was necessary in order to protect himself against what he perceived was his impending serious injury or death. And because the circumstances were such that he had no option to retreat. The law of self-defense presumes that he had a reasonable belief in this case that he had to use deadly force because he was being forcefully removed from his vehicle as he was being beaten by three men. Once I determined that the use of force by Hughes was justified, we then had to research whether he could be prosecuted for the shooting of Bowman, as there is no clear evidence that Mr. Bowman assaulted Mr. Hughes. The case law interpreting the self-defense statute concludes that since Hughes was justified in using his deadly force to defend himself, he may not be prosecuted for injuries or death that he inflicted on other assailants or bystanders. Thus, Hughes cannot be pr uh, prosecuted, I'm sorry, for shooting Bowman. What do we know about Farrell, Panabianco, Bowman, and Michelle? Raymond Farrell is from Philadelphia. At the time of his death, he was 28 years old, five foot seven, 241 pounds. He was the initial aggressor. He is seen throwing multiple punches at Hughes using both of his fists, and he is closest to the shooting during the incident and ultimately ends up on top of Hughes. He was shot four times, one contact shot to the high middle chest, three other shots to the left nipple area, one with stippling, which indicates that he was shot at close range, and he did die from his wounds. Stephen Panabianco of Ben Salem. He was 30 years old, five foot seven, 187 pounds at the time of his death. He throws the first punch. He punches Hughes' friend Luis Rodriguez four times in addition to punching Mr. Hughes. He shot twice, once in the middle of the back and once in the right thigh. And unfortunately, he too succumbed as a result of being shot. Richard Bowman of Philadelphia, 24 years old, six feet tall. It is unclear, and frankly, I think will never be made clear, whether he was trying to pull off Mr. Farrell from Mr. Hughes or trying to pull Mr. Hughes out of the car. But it would seem to me, and since I'm the arbiter here, what I decide controls, that he is attempting to defuse the situation. He has never observed throwing any punches at anyone. He was shot once in the right forearm and his status currently is in recovery and is not going to be charged with any crimes. Michael Michelle of Philadelphia is 24 years old, five foot 10. He throws punches at Hughes in the head, landing four blows. He is not injured, he is alive, and he will be charged with simple assault. My reasoning is also based upon uh, a video, which we will watch very, very shortly. And I find the video, along with the many facts that we've gained through interviews, to be controlling as factual in this case. 
Uh, Mr. Gamish, are you ready to play the video? Uh, before you do, let me just preview it, I'm sorry. What you'll see here is uh, a video that's true to content, but that has been edited for clarity so that people that are viewing this for the first time or, or any time after this will know who the actors are and what they are doing during the various stages of the video. After the video concludes, you will then hear the audio 911 call that Mr. Hughes places immediately after the shootings. Would you roll the video, please? But I think it will be helpful in anticipation of some questions that our viewers might have to give you a chronological narrative of what you just witnessed. This initially starts with uh, the uh, Panabianco and Farrell group who are behind the SUV and female friends are all in Steam Pub. Hughes and his friend Luis Rodriguez are also in Steam Pub. There is no interaction, there is no precipitating event for this that occurs in that bar. There's no interaction between the two groups whatsoever until you see what occurs on the video. The assailants and the three females exit the bar and congregate near the vehicle in which they arrive, that SUV. Farrell is visibly intoxicated, seen stumbling and leaning up against the vehicles. Panabianco is also swaying on his feet. Hughes' vehicle is parked next to his assailant's vehicle. You see the lights flashing on Hughes' vehicle as he remotely unlocks the door, in essence to signal them that he is arriving. Hughes and Rodriguez then approach the vehicles, which you see. Hughes asks Michelle to stop leaning on his vehicle. Michelle does comply. Hughes walks away from the vehicles and out of the video to urinate. Rodriguez then converses with one of the women in the group with the assailants. Rodriguez then gets into the front passenger side of Hughes's vehicle. You then see lights flashing on Hughes's vehicle as he unlocks the car again remotely as they prepare to leave. Hughes comes back to his vehicle, yet Farrell continues to lean on Hughes's vehicle. A female pushes Farrell out of the way Hughes opens his driver's side door. Farrell then pushes past the female and approaches Hughes in an aggressive stance. Panabianco then comes from behind Farrell and throws the first punch over Farrell's sh shoulder, connecting with Hughes. Farrell pummels Hughes with punches using both fists. Rodriguez then exits the vehicle and attempts to come to help Hughes. Panabianco punches Rodriguez in the head and face four or five times. There's no evidence that Rodriguez ever punched anybody. Rodriguez then flees immediately towards the bar and does go into the bar to get security. Farrell and Hughes have since gone to the ground in between the two cars and are no longer visible on the video. Hughes reported later to police that he was then attempting to get into his vehicle at this time, yet Farrell is pulling him out of the car simultaneously. Michelle approaches and punches Hughes four times over the car door. Bowman then enters the space between the vehicles and appears to be pulling Farrell away. Hughes warns his attackers that he has a weapon and will use it. No one disperses. Hughes reaches his gun, which is between his seat and the center console. He racks the slide, the gun is loaded, and he shoots eight shots, leaving six or seven shots in the magazine. Contrary to rumors that we've heard, he did not empty his gun. He did not seek out anybody else to hunt down and kill. Nothing of the sort occurred. Farrell then drops between the vehicles, and Panabianco and Bowman stumble back a few yards and drop to the rear of the vehicles. Hughes emerges from in between the vehicles and calls 911. Extensive investigation occurs, which is why there was a lengthy time period between the time of the shootings 
and now when we made this decision. Based upon my determination of the facts, the applicable law, and the totality of the circumstances, I find that Liam Hughes was justified in using deadly force in shooting Raymond Farrell, Stephen Panabianco, and Richard Bowman, and thus will not be charged criminally for his conduct that evening. I further find that Michael Michelle was not justified in using any force whatsoever at the time he was punching his victim, Liam Hughes, causing him injuries and substantial pain and will therefore be charged with simple assault. Thank you. We will make these, uh, we will make these available upon request, correct? I appreciate you all coming. Does anybody have any questions? This is a hypothetical, and I know it's not always useful to speculate, but given the evidence in the case, had these victims not been killed, would they face similar charges to what Michelle faces, a simple assault? Yes. Simple assault or worse. Anybody else have any other questions? All right, thank you all. I appreciate it.